Today's lesson is 6-6, six -six, and our objectives are to determine if a given point is a solution to a system of linear inequalities, to build a graph and solve systems of linear inequalities in two variables, and then to solve a contextual problem, which we'll do in class tomorrow. A system of linear inequalities is a set of two or more linear inequalities containing two or more variables. So this is my system of linear inequalities. And we looked at these yesterday, but we only looked at one. So basically, we're just going to look at two of them on the same graph today. A system, again, means two or more. So this would be a system of linear inequalities. Inequalities because they have the inequality symbol. The solution of a system of linear inequalities consists of all the ordered pairs that satisfy all of the linear inequalities in the system. So yesterday, we checked to make sure that a point in our shaded region checked, this time we have to check a point in the shaded region for both of them that works for both. A graph of a system will show the solutions as the shaded, um, as a shaded half plane. So like right here, I've got this inequality graphed right here. I've got this one graphed right here. And this is the area that's being shaded by both. So if I pick this point three, three, that's right here and I check it in both inequalities, it's gonna be true for both of them. Right, this is number one. Give me just a minute. We're going to switch to notebook paper. All right, again, number one you're going to do on notebook paper. You have a note sheet as well, but these first couple ones need to be on notebook paper. This is your first one. Go ahead and write it down. Number one is negative one, negative three. And we want to know if that's a solution to this system of linear inequalities. The first one is y is less than or equal to negative three x plus one. The other one is y is less than two x plus two. So we want to know, is this a solution? And for it to be a solution, it has to be true for both. So let's check it and see. Again, I'm going to go through and label these X and Y just to make sure that I know which one is which. I'm going to take this first one. Y is less than or equal to negative 3X plus 1. And everywhere I see a Y, I'm going to plug in a negative 3. Everywhere I see an X, I'm going to plug in a negative 1. So I'm going to say negative 3 is less than or equal to negative 3. Parentheses, negative 1 plus one. I'm going to work that out. Negative three times negative one is positive three. And then three plus three is four. So I'll just keep bringing down my negative three here. So negative three is less than or equal to three plus one. Negative three is less than or equal to four. And that's a true statement. Negative three is less than or equal to four. So it works for that one. Now we have to check to make sure it works for the other one. So I've got y is less than 2x plus 2. Instead of y, again, I'm going to plug in that negative 3 from up here. And instead of x, I'm going to plug in that negative 1. So I have negative 3 is less than. I don't have anything to work out on this side, so I'll just bring that down. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is zero, so negative three is less than zero. And that's a true statement because negative three is less than zero. So since it checks for both, I'm gonna say that the point negative one, negative three is a solution. Make sure you have all of that work written before you move on. If you need to pause the video, do that now. All right, here's number two. We've got the point negative one, five, and the system y is greater than or equal to x plus three, and y is less than negative two x minus one. Go ahead and write that down again on your notebook paper. So again, they wanna know if this point is a solution to this system, so I'm gonna plug it in and find out. I'm gonna take this top one first. Y is less than, or y is greater than or equal to x plus three. I'm going to go back up here and again label my point. Just again, that helps me make sure I don't put anything in the wrong place. Instead of y, I'm going to plug in 5 is greater than or equal to. And instead of x, I'm going to plug in negative 1 plus 3. So I'm going to bring down my 5 because there's nothing to work out there. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. And 5 is greater than or equal to 2. So that checks out. So it is a solution to that one. Let's check the second one. Again, it has to work for both. Y is less than negative 2x minus 1. So again, instead of y, it's going to be a 5. Negative 2, and instead of x, it's going to be a negative 1. Nothing to work out on that left side. Whoops. 
just a second. All right. So y is less than negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2 minus 1. And 2 minus 1 is 1, so 5 is less than 1. So if you look at that, 5 is not less than 1, so it does not work for that one. So it has to work for both. So since it does not work for this one and that did not make a true statement, we're going to say that negative 1, 5 is not a solution. Again, if it doesn't work for both, then it is not a solution. What this, was, this would mean graph was, is that this point would be in the shaded region of the top inequality, but would not be in the shaded region of the bottom inequality. So it is not a solution to the system. Make sure you have all of that written down before you move on. All right, so there's our first objective. We should be able to determine if a given point is a solution to a system of linear inequalities. Now we're going to go on to graphing and, sol and to graph and solve systems. To show all the solutions of a system of linear inequalities, graph the solutions of each inequality. The solutions of the system are represented by the overlapping shaded region. Below are examples in your book, so you don't need to write those down. If we look at these two lines, this one is being shaded below, and this one's being shaded below, so the area that's being shaded by both is right here. Same thing here, I've got two points, and again, this point right here would be a solution because it's in this region that's being shaded by both of them. This one, here I've got this line graphed and this one graphed, and this is the area that's being shaded by both because this one is shaded above and this one is shaded below. So this point over here would not be a solution. It's being shaded by one of them, but not both of them. All right, here's number three. All right, go ahead and write the actual system on your notebook paper, and then I'm going to have my notes handout for my graph that's already there um, handy as well. Now this first one, we need to look at each one of these. This one's y is less than or equal to 3. This is one of, the, one of those ones where there's a y and no x. If there's a y and no x, that tells me that I'm going to need a table. This is the one where all the way down the y column is going to be 3, and I can make up numbers for my x. So that's how I'm going to graph that top one. Again, that's if there's a y and no x. So I'm just going to go through and plot these points. So negative 1, 3 would be left one and up 1, 2, 3. And then 0, 3 would be nowhere left or right but up 3. And then 1, 3 would be right 1 and up 3. So there's that line. So now I'm going to look. It's got that extra mark, so I know it's going to be a solid line. I'm going to draw my solid line. Now this time, this is kind of where this gets a little bit different from what we're used to. Before we were shading, going ahead and shading right here. Since it's a system, we don't want to shade until we figure out what's the area being shaded by both. So all I'm going to do is look and say, okay, that's less than, so it's going to be shaded below. So I'm just going to draw some arrows showing that it's going to be shaded below. I'm not actually going to shade it here. I'm just going to draw me some arrows so that I see that it's being shaded below. Now we're going to graph this second one right here. And this one actually is in y equals mx plus b. It has a y and an x here. But I'm going to go through and I'm going to say negative and I'm going to put a 1 in front of that x plus 5 because I need to be able to see what my slope is here. And if there's no bottom part of your fraction, you can always say over 1. So now I know that I'm going to start at 5 and I'm going to rise negative 1 or rise negative 1 and run 1. So now I'm ready to graph this one. So I'm going to start with that 5, just like we've been doing when we graph. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'm going to put a dot. Then my rise is negative 1. And again, I always like to put that negative on top. That tells me to go down 1. And if I do that, the 1 on the bottom is positive, so I'm going to go right 1. I'm going to go down 1 and right 1 a couple more times just to get a couple extra points there. All right, and then I'm going to look at my inequality symbol. There's no extra mark, so I know that this one's actually going to be a dashed line. So 
So I made that one a dash long. So then I'm going to look, it's greater than, so it's going to be shaded above. So again, I'm going to draw arrows going above. I'm not going to shade until I find out what the area that's shaded by both. So there's my graph. Let's get that over a little bit so you can see a little bit more of that. All right, now we've got to figure out which area is being shaded by both here. If I look at this one, I've got arrows going this way, but no arrows going up for this section. Here, I don't have arrows going from this line or this one. In this area right here, I have arrows going down, but no arrows going down right here. If I look at this little area, I've got arrows going down and an arrow going up. So this is my area that's being shaded by both. So I'm going to go ahead and shade in that area that has arrows on both. And that's the area where my solutions are because it's being shaded by both of them. All right, guys, I'm not sure if I was um, recording right then or not because I went to go hit the pause button and it was already paused. So, um, so go ahead and make sure you have all of this work um, before you move on. If not, please go ahead and pause the video now and go ahead and get that work down. All right, so here we have this area that's shaded by both. I need to pick a point to check. So I'm going to pick the point one, two, three, four, five, and up two. So I'm going to pick the point five, two in order to check. So we're going to go through and check with both. So I'm going to go back to my notebook paper here to check. So I'm checking the point five, two. That's my X, that's my Y. I'm gonna check in both. So on the Y, on this first one, I'll have to do is plug in the two. Two is less than or equal to three, and that works out. On the second one, Y, so that's my first one. So my second one, Y is greater than negative X plus five. Instead of X, I'm gonna plug in negative, or instead of X, I'm gonna plug in five. Instead of Y, I'm gonna plug in two. So I have negative 5 because the negative out front there plus 5. That gives me 0 and 2 is greater than 0. So that one works out as well. So we did our shading correctly because our point that we picked that was in our shader region worked out for both. Make sure you have the work, the graph, and the check written before you move on. All right, go ahead and write down number 4. It says x is greater than negative 4 is one of my inequalities. The other one is y is less than negative 3 over 5x minus 2. All right, now we've got to look at what it looks like to graph both of these. This first one, there's an x and no y. Since there's an x and no y, that tells me that I'm going to need that table again. So if there's a y and no x or an x and no y, that tells you that you're going to need that table. Here, x is greater than negative 4, so everywhere in the x column is going to be negative 4. And then I'm going to make up some stuff for y. So there's that one. Now this one's ready to go. It's ready to graph because it's got the minus 2 to know where to begin, and I'm going to know that I'm going to go down 3 and over 5. So I'm good to go with that one. All right, so we're going to go ahead first and do this first one. We're going to plot these points right here. So we're going to say negative 4, negative 1. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. And we're going to put a dot. And so then we're going to go down negative 1. So right here, so this is negative 4, negative 1, negative 4, 0. And then negative 4 and 1 goes right here. There's no extra mark on this one, so it's going to be a dashed line. It's going to be a vertical line. All right, and it is greater than. So again, usually we say shade above or shade below, but here there is no above or below because it's a vertical line. So this is going to go back to like it was whenever we had number lines. The right is going to be greater than and left, or sorry, right is going to be greater than and left is going to be less than. So since this one is greater than, we're going to shade to the right. So again, I'm just going to draw arrows. I'm not actually going to shade just yet. Show that this one should be shaded to the right. Now I'm going to graph the second one. I'm going to start at negative 2 on the y-axis. 1, negative 1, negative 2. So right there. Again, I always like my negative to go on the top. That tells me to go down 3. 
One, two, three. The positive on the bottom tells me to go over five. One, two, three, four, five. And now I can go the other way, so I can go one, two, three up, and one, two, three, four, five this way. Again, this one doesn't have the extra mark either, so it's also going to be a dashed line. And we're going to look, this one says less than. Less than means it's going to be shaded below. So I'm going to draw arrows going below the line. There's my arrows going below. So I'm going to check each section. This one right here has arrows going this way, but none this way. This one doesn't have any arrows. And here, this one has an arrow going down, but no arrow coming this way. This one's got arrows going to the right and down. So this is the area that's being shaded by both. I'm going to go ahead and fill that region right there in. There we go. So everywhere in the shaded region is a solution to my system because it will work for both of them. I'm going to pick a point to check. I'm going to pick the point 0, negative 4. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So I'm going to pick this point 0 negative four to check. So I'm going to move my graph for just a second. If you need to pause the video now to finish getting the graph, go ahead and do that. All right, so I've picked the point zero, negative four in order to check. So here's my X and my Y. Again, I always like to label those. This first one is X is greater than negative four. So instead of X, I'm going to put in zero. Zero is greater than negative four. That's a true statement. The bottom one, y, is less than negative 3 over 5x minus 2. Instead of y, I'm going to plug in negative 4. Instead of x, I'm going to plug in 0. Bring the negative 4 down. Anything times 0 here is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. And negative 4 is less than negative 2, so that one works out as well. Please make sure that you have the work, the graph, and the check down before you move on. All right, go ahead and get down number five. Your first uh, inequality is 3x minus 2y is greater than or equal to 2. And your second one is y is less than 4x. So the first thing we have to do is make sure that both of these are solved for y because we can't check, we can't graph the line unless we have it in slope intercept form. So for our first one here, we have 3x minus 2y is greater than or equal to 2. And we're going to have to go ahead and solve this for y before we can graph the line. So I'm going to do I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. That's going to cancel there. And these aren't like terms, so they can't be combined. So I'm just going to rewrite my problem. Negative 2y is greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 2. And I just put a plus sign there because that 2 is positive. So I know that it's the same thing as just adding 2. Now I have to get my y by itself. When a letter and a number are touching, they're being multiplied. So I have to divide to undo the multiplication. When I divide or multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, it flips the sign in the middle. So I want you to show that with your little flippy arrow there so you know later on when you come back and look at this why you flipped that sign. These negative twos are going to cancel and it's going to leave me with y is less than or equal to 3 over 2 is going to stay as a fraction. I want to keep from turning that into a decimal because you can't graph if your decimal, if your slope is a decimal, you don't know what your rise over run is. It always needs to be a fraction. So uh, two divided by negative two is going to give me negative one or minus one. So now I'm ready to graph this line. Let's go ahead and look at my other line. It is y is less than four x. So that is already in slope intercept form, or y equals kx. Um, it is a direct variation equation or inequality. So now I am ready to look at my graphs. <clears throat> and for number five on my graph sheet, I'm going to go ahead and graph my first line, which is y is less than or equal to 3 over 2x minus 1. So my b, or my begin, is the negative 1 on the y-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and make my point there. 
And then my slope is three over two, so I'm going to rise three, run two. I can come back down here and go down three and back two. There is an extra mark underneath my inequality sign, so I can go ahead and make my line a solid line. It is going to be a solid line. And now I can graph my other inequality, which is, like I said before, a direct variation equation, which means it's going to begin at zero. It's the same thing as saying 4x plus zero. So the origin is going to be my beginning point here. I'm going to begin at the zero, zero. And then my slope is, it says here, four. I know that if I need to turn any whole number into a fraction, I can just put it over one because that's the same thing. So that just means I'm going to rise four, run one. One, two, three, four, one. And again, I can come one, two, three, four, one. All right. This line is going to be dashed. But before I draw it in, I'm going to go back and draw my arrows on my first line to see which way I'm going to be shading it. It came out to be y is less than, y is less than 3 over 2 minus 1. So I'm going to draw my arrows. I'm not going to shade yet, but I'm going to draw my arrows this way because this line will be shaded this way. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw a dashed line for the next one. Again, it's dashed because there is no extra mark underneath my inequality sign. Now this one is y is less than as well, so it's going to be shaded this way. So now I just have to pay attention and see which way my arrows are going. And you can see here that while this is in the shaded region for this line, it's not in the shaded region for this line because this line is being shaded this way. So I have to come to the point where the two shaded regions are actually overlapping. And that's going to be my solution set for this system. So now I'm going to pick a point in this solution set and I'm going to check with it. So let's say 2, negative 1. 1, 2, negative 1. This is going to be my point. I'm going to check with 2, comma, negative 1. All right. So make sure that you have that graph down and you have it shaded. You, again, you're shading with pencil probably, and that's no big deal. Just make sure you have it shaded. You can see what's shaded and mark the point that we're going to check with. And then when you're ready, you can hit play and go ahead and move on and look at the check. So in order to check, I'm going to put my check up here. I'm checking with 2, negative 1, x, y. I go back to the original problem, 3x minus 2y is greater than or equal to 2, and I'm going to plug in 4x and I'm going to plug in 4y. So it's going to be 3 times 2 for x minus 2 times negative 1 for y is greater than or equal to 2. And then I'm going to multiply this out. 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. Negative 2 times negative 1 is going to give me positive 2. It's greater than or equal to 2. 6 plus 2 is 8. And 8 is greater than or equal to 2. So that one checks out. Now this one is y is less than 4x. I'm going to plug in a negative 1 for y. I'm going to plug in a 2 for x. 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 1 is less than 8. That one also checks out. Make sure that you have all the work, the check, and the graph written down before you move on. You can pause or rewind the video now if you need to. All right, so let's go ahead and look at number 6. Go ahead and get this system written down. It is y is greater than. 
negative 5x plus 5, and y, I'm sorry, it was y is less than negative 5x plus 5, and y is greater than negative 5x minus 1. Both of these are already in slope-intercept form, so we're ready to go ahead and graph. Now again, when my slope appears as a whole number, I know that that's the exact same thing as just putting that over 1 to turn it into a fraction, that's going to give me my rise over run. For my first line, my b, my begin, is going to be the positive 5 on the y. So I'm going to come over here and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's going to be my beginning point. My slope is negative 5 over 1, so I'm going to go down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1. And again, down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1. I have no extra mark underneath my inequality sign, so I'm going to go ahead and make a dashed line here. And I'm going to go ahead and check and see which way this line is going to be shaded. Because it is less than, it is going to be shaded below. So I'm going to be shading this way. All right, for my next line, my beginning point is going to be at the negative 1 on the y. So I'm going to make my point here. And my slope, again, is going to be negative 5 over 1. So I'm going to go down 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 1. And then I can go up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and back 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw this line. Again, there is no extra mark underneath my inequality sign, so I'm going to make a dashed line. Ooh, and that's not a very good line. Right, try to straighten that up a little bit. Um, now I'm going to look and see which way this line is going to be shaded, and it is greater than, so I'm going to be shading it this way. So you may notice that these lines are parallel. They did have the same slope originally, and great job if you notice that from the get-go. And they are shaded inside. I know it's a little bit messy. It's a little bit hard to tell. But my solution set is going to be the space in between these two lovely lines here. So I'm going to pick a spot in between the two lines. And again, it's going to be hard to tell, but I'm going to go with 0, 1. I'm going to go with 0, comma, 1. And I'm going to check with that spot. So make sure that you have that graph down before we look at the check. Okay, as be careful with this. When we were just doing systems of equations, if they were parallel, it was automatically no solution. If it's inequalities, it doesn't mean that it's automatically no solution. We still have solutions to these, even though they're parallel. Okay. So my point, again, that I'm checking with is 0, 1, x, y. And I'm going to plug it back into the original equation. So for the first one, it's going to be 1 is less than negative 5 times 0 plus 5. 1 is less than negative 5 times 0 gives me 0 plus 5, which gives me 5. 1 is less than 5. That is true. And on my second one, I have 1 is greater than negative 5 times 0 minus 1. 1 is greater than negative 5 times 0 gives me 0 minus 1. 1 is greater than negative 1. And that is also true. So that is a solution. Make sure that you have the work and the check written down before you move on. All right, for number 7, go ahead and get the problem written down. It is y is greater than x plus 1 and y is less than or equal to x minus 3. Both of these are already solved for y. They're already in slope-intercept form, and we're ready to go ahead and graph them. So let's go ahead and look at the first one. Real quick, just so we understand when there's nothing in front of the letter, we know there's an understood 1 there. When we need to turn a whole number into a fraction, we make it 1 over 1 or whatever the number is over 1. So let's go ahead and put in a 1 over 1 in front of our x's here so we understand that that is our slope. So for the first one, we're going to begin at the positive 1, and our slope is going to be 1 over 1. So we're going to rise 1, run 1. Rise 1, run 1. Rise 1, run 1. And my first line, there is no extra mark underneath my inequality sign, so it is going to be a dashed line, and it is going to be shaded up because it is greater than. So my first line is dashed, and it is shaded up because it is, again, greater than. Now my second line begins at the negative 3. 
one, two, three. And my slope is again one over one. So my lines again are going to be parallel. This line is solid because there is an extra mark underneath my inequality sign. And this line is shaded down because it is y is less than. So now I know that we just said you can have a solution with parallel lines here, um, unlike you could when we were doing equations because these are inequalities, so there's a shaded region. But if you'll notice here, the shaded region for this line is down here. The shaded region for this line is up here. So the two shaded regions actually never intersect with each other, so there is no solution for this particular problem because there is no point where they, where they intersect. So you're going to write no solution, and you're not going to shade any region of this graph. This is your last example for the video. We're going to go over one more problem with you in class, um, but make sure that you have this down and that's the end of your video. Thank you for watching.